Hello, fifth grade, and welcome to ELA's Unit 1, Week 2. Let's go over our vocabulary words first, and then we're going to jump into our weekly story. So your first word is the word anxious. A person feels nervous or worried about something when they're anxious. So when you are anxious, you're concerned about something. It could be maybe you're anxious about taking a test or about going to a new school. An example sentence is, I was anxious about my job interview. You can use it in question form by saying, how is feeling anxious different from feeling scared about something? Your second word is the word assemble. So to assemble means to bring together or to come together. So my mom asked the family to assemble in the living room. This is different than assembling something where you're putting pieces together. It has a similar meaning, but, um, but it's slightly varied. So when might people at your school assemble? So when might they come together? Number three, your word is decipher. So we have that PH combination right there that makes the F sound. When you try to figure out the meaning of something that's difficult to read or understand, you decipher it. So we decipher that her smile means she's happy. How might you decipher a letter code? So how would you figure out what it means? Your fourth word is the word distracted. When your attention is kind of pulled away from what you're doing, you get distracted. So a movie distracted us from studying. What can you do to avoid being distracted? So if you're you know, reading something and someone comes running through the room, your attention is drawn to that person that came running through the room. So you are distracted from your reading. Next, we have the word navigate. To navigate is to make your way through something. So the captains navigate the ship to the United States. They put it on a particular course or route to get to that place. When might the ability to navigate be an important skill to have? So what if you're going camping or hiking or hunting out in the woods? You need to be able to navigate so you can find your way back to uh, where your campsite is or where, uh, you, where you happen to be staying. Next, we have the word retrace. So retrace has the prefix re in it, which means again. So to retrace something means to go back over it. Now you can retrace your steps, which means to go back over the same places that you walked before, or you can retrace a drawing where you have the drawing and then you're tracing over it one more time, you're retracing. The artist will retrace the pencil sketch with markers. When might you need to retrace your steps? So think about if you misplaced something, you lost something, put it down somewhere and you can't remember where you put it down. You would want to retrace your steps so that you can go back to the places you were and find it. Number seven is the word accomplish. When you do something successfully, you accomplish it. So you can, uh, when you cross the finish line, you accomplish your goal. So if you were in a race and you've, you crossed over the finish line, you've now accomplished that goal. You've done it successfully. What would you like to accomplish? So what are some goals that you have that you would like to reach? And your last word is the word options. Options is just another word for choices or alternatives. So if I say you have the option between spaghetti or pizza for dinner, those are your two choices, your two options. The class had options for field trips to take. And when might you have options? All right, next let's take a look at our spelling words for this week. This week's spelling words are focusing on long vowel sounds. Now remember, a long vowel makes that, a long vowel sound is when that vowel says its name. So A like play, or E like C, or I like mine. You're hearing A, E, I. O like stone, or U like cute. Now the Y is making the I sound here. So you can spell the Y making an I sound in words like my. So let's take a look at your words. You have the word paste, bride, shave, spice, greed, plead, greet, heap, paid, coach, theme, type, oak, growth, yoke, folks, aim, pray, toe, grind, tenth, damp, stuff, decay, and lifetime. 
Now we're going to go over a lot of different ways that you can make the long vowel sounds. Not all of these apply to your words. So you don't need to focus on all of them for this week's spelling words, but these are all the different ways that you can make these long vowel sounds. Now, when we're making the long vowel sounds, there are a lot of really common ways that we do that, and I'm listing them here. We have the long A, which you can make with just the letter A, like baby or tomato or basic. AI, like pain, contain, or plain. You could have an A with a consonant letter and then a silent E at the end, like state or mail or date. You can make the long A sound by saying E-I-G-H, like sleigh or freight or wait. Those all sound, ha, have an A sound in them. Or E-A, like break, stake, or bear. E-I, like vein, air, reindeer. You're hearing all the A in them. A-Y, like gray, play, or stay. And E-Y, like pray, P-R-E-Y, they, or obey. Now let's focus on the long E sound. Long E can be made with just an E for short words like me, be, she, he, or a double E like see or meet or seek. You can make this also with an E-A like beak or streak or leak. E-I like receipt or caffeine or ceiling. I-E like chief, belief or peace. E consonant letter E like theme or hear or delete. E-Y, like key, money, or honey. Or just a Y, like sunny, or baby, or candy. So baby, we saw in both of those. It has the long A sound and the long E sound at the end with, made with that Y. For a long I, we can make I with just an I, like bind, find, or pilot. We can make it with a Y, like cry, try, or my. I-E, like pie, fried, or tie. I consonant letter E, like kite, bike, or bride. I-G-H, like bright, might, or night. Or Y consonant letter E, like rhyme, or type. Next we have long O. Long O says go, no, or yogurt, which is an O by itself. O-E, like toe, foe, or doe. O, consonant letter E, like tone, slope, or robe. O-A, like soak, boat, or groan. And O-W, like grow, toe, or low. Now the long U can make two different sounds. It can have the U sound or the oo sound. So the long U, like music, has the U, or tulip has the U, or human. We have U consonant letter E, like use, or flute, or mute. U-E, like blue, argue, or rescue. O-U, like group, soup, or wound, not wound. W-O-U-N-D can have two pronunciation. That's why I put the word injury next to it. A wound, like a place where you got hurt. Or E-W, like fewer, new, or drew. So those are our long vowel sounds here. All right, next we're going to get into our grammar. So for grammar, we are talking about subjects, predicates, and commas. Now, a sentence is a group of words that expresses a complete thought. This we learned about last week. Every complete sentence has two parts. It has a subject and a predicate. The subject names the person or thing that the sentence is about. The predicate tells you what the subject is or what the subject does. So my sample sentence here is going to be, my friend Samira plays with her jump rope. Now a simple subject is the main noun or pronoun in the complete subject. The simple predicate is the main verb or the verb phrase in the, uh, that's part of the complete predicate. So if I say my friend Samira, Samira is my simple subject. That's who I'm talking about. I can use that as my subject without the extra word. 
What does Samira do? She plays. So here's my subject and the verb. So simple subject, simple predicate. Now the complete subject is all of the words that are related to the subject. So a complete subject can be one word if it's a really simple sentence, or it can be more than one word. So as a one word example, I can say Sarah walks her dog. So Sarah would be my, my complete subject because that's all, that's all that's in the subject area. But we can have a subject, a complete subject that has more than one word. So if I say the colorful bird sings sweetly all afternoon, the colorful bird is my complete subject. It's the subject and the things that came before it that describe it. Now, just like that, we also have a complete predicate. The complete predicate is the verb and all of the words that tell what the subject is or does. Now, again, you can have a one word subject if it's a very simple sentence like Sarah walks. Walks is the complete predicate. There's nothing else there. But it can also be more than one word. So we'll use that same sentence we used before. The colorful bird sings sweetly all afternoon. So sings sweetly all afternoon is my complete predicate. So it's the verb sings and all of the words after it that are related to it. So now let's circle back to my sample sentence. My friend Samira plays with her jump rope. So my complete subject that I have highlighted in blue is my friend Samira. My complete predicate tells me everything she does, plays with her jump rope. So this is my complete subject and my complete predicate. The simple subject is just the subject itself and just the simple predicate is just the thing they're doing just the verb. Now, we can also have what we call compound subjects and compound predicates. <clears throat> now, a compound subject is two or more subjects with the same predicate. So the subjects are usually joined by the words and or or. So if a compound subject has two subjects, the subjects are not separated by commas. If there's three or more subjects, then they are separated by commas. So I'll give you an example. A compound subject that has two subjects, I can say Akram and Zakaria went to the park. So my two subjects are Akram and Zakaria. They're joined by the word and. Now, if there's three subjects or three or more, I'm going to have to start using commas. So I can say Akram, comma, Zakaria, comma, and Dawood went to the park. So a complete or a compound subject has a lot of different people, two or more in the subject, that are all doing the same thing. They all share the same predicate. A compound predicate is the opposite. You have your one subject that's doing more than one thing or is being described in more than one way. So let's give an example with just two predicates. Zakaria likes to run and jump every day. So the two things he likes to do are run and jump, it's joined by the word and. I can also say, does she like to play tag or hide and seek at snack time? So the two things she could be doing are playing tag or playing hide and seek. I can also say the child wanted to eat cookies, but he had a tummy ache. So there's two predicates, there's two things that are happening. He wanted to eat cookies, but he had a tummy ache. Now, if I have three or more predicates, so my one subject doing three or more things or being described in three or more ways, I can say Hassan likes to read, comma, write, comma, and tell stories. So there's three things, read, write, and tell stories. I can also ask, do you want pizza, comma, pasta, comma, or sandwiches for lunch? So usually when you're using and, you're combining all of those things. When you're using or, you're talking about a choice. So now we've gone over uh, simple subjects and predicates, complete subjects and predicates, and compound subjects and predicates. OK, next let's talk about commas. We use commas to separate three or more words in a series, just like we saw above. We do not use a comma after the last word, so a series is three or more words. We use commas to separate the words in the series, and then we use the word and or or before the last word. So over here, I numbered them off. I've, I said the farm has goats, cows, sheep, and chickens. So my words in my series are goat, 
cow, goats, cows, sheep, chickens. There's four of them, right? So I have three commas plus the word and. So I have four things separating them. So if I have four words in my series, I have three commas and the word and. I can also say, do you want to go to the park, beach, or zoo today? So I have three words in my series here, park, beach, zoo. And they're separated by two commas in the word or. Or I can say, we need blue, red, black, and green markers. So four words in my series, four different colors that are separated by three commas in the word and. So after the first word, after the second word, after the third word, then the word and, then we have our fourth word. Let's also talk about a positives and a positive phrases. Now, a positives or a positive phrases rename the noun and describe the noun that comes right before it. What does that mean? And a positive is basically a fancy way of saying extra information that you're being given about the subject. So, a positives are separated from the rest of a sentence by a comma before and after it. So, it has a comma right before it and has a comma right after it. And that kind of tells you that that can be removed from the sentence and your sentence will be just fine. So my sample sentence here is Hermione Granger is accomplished at spells. She is a student at Hogwarts school. I can combine these sentences by saying Hermione Granger, comma, a student at Hogwarts school, comma, is accomplished at spells. Now, the core of my sentence is that Hermione Granger is accomplished at spells. I can have that sentence without putting in the extra information. The appositive noun phrase, a student at Hogwarts school, gives us extra information about our subject. So you have your subject in the sentence. After it, you have your a positive phrase that gives you bonus information about your subject. And then you have your predicate. OK, let's move on and discuss your genre for this week. Now, your genre is realistic fiction. Realistic fiction is a story that didn't happen, but it contains all of the elements of a story that could happen. So this is the same genre that we talked about last week. Some of the elements include characters, settings, and events that are like real people, places, and events. They can include dialogue and descriptive details. And a lot of times they'll include illustrations. Now for our vocab strategy, we're going to move into something that's a lot of fun. These are called idioms. Now idioms are a type of figurative language and they're found in many languages, not just English. So idioms are phrases that have a different meaning than the words that they're made up of. Let's take a look at some examples. If I tell you to shake a leg, I'm telling you to hurry up. Now, I'm not actually asking you to shake your leg, but that phrase, when those words are put together, has a different meaning of its own. If you asked me to do something and I said, oh, I'm so sorry, it slipped my mind. I don't mean it actually slipped out of my mind. I just mean I forgot. If you say the phrase to try your hand at something, that means give it a try for the first time. This next one is one that I haven't heard very often, but it's, it's an interesting one. If someone says they'll do something in two shakes of a lamb's tail, that means they're doing it super fast without taking a break in between. It just means they're gonna do it quickly. Now, if you have ever tried to get into a car with an older sibling and they call shotgun, they say, I'm riding shotgun. What does that mean? That means you're sitting in the front seat next to the driver. So the passenger seat that's in front next to the driver. If something happens out of the blue, that means it happens without warning. If I ask you something and you say, well, let me sleep on it. I don't mean, you don't mean you're actually going to sleep on the thing. It means you want to take some time to think more about it and then make a decision about it later. The phrase, I'm all ears, means that you have my attention. So if you come up to me and say, I have a story I need to tell you, and I tell you, go ahead, I'm all ears. That doesn't mean I'm covered in ears. It just means that you have my full attention. Now, if you are trying something and you're worried, you say, I'm on pins and needles. That means I'm really nervous or really anxious about something. And our last example is 
if you decide to call it a day, you're working on a project and you say, I'm going to call it a day. That means you're not naming your project a day. It means you're deciding to quit or stop for now and finish later. All right, that takes us to the end of our grammar notes, our vocab strategies, and all of our ELA notes for this week. Let's go ahead and jump into your weekly story. Genre, realistic fiction. Second day, first impressions. By Michelle Knudsen. Illustrated by Craig Orbach. Essential question. What can lead us to rethink an idea? Read about a team's adventure as they figure out clues to a scavenger hunt. Louisa hesitated at the park entrance, scanning the sea of strangers for red t-shirts and trying to ignore the butterflies in her stomach. The entire fifth grade of Greenhaven Elementary was spread out before her, along with assorted teachers and parent volunteers wandering the sun-dappled grass and gathering excitedly in color-coded groups for the morning's event. She finally spotted her teacher, Mr. Martucci, waving at her with a clipboard from the shade of a huge oak tree. She made a beeline for him. Three of her teammates were already there. Louisa had met them yesterday in class. The boys leaning on the fence were Tyler and Sam, and the tall girl near them was Devon. Louisa hadn't had an opportunity to get to know any of them yet. Maybe today, she thought hopefully. This was her first real chance to start making some friends in this new town. She just had to get off on the right foot. All right, everyone, announced Principal Goldstein into her megaphone. I know you are all anxious to begin, so please assemble with your teams to start the annual Greenhaven fifth grade second day of school scavenger hunt. Remember... You have unique sets of clues, so don't get distracted by what your rival teams are doing. The finish line is not marked on your maps. You must figure out the clues to get there. The first team to reach the finish line will be our winners. Another boy from Louisa's class, Halen, dashed over to their group. He was panting audibly as he stumbled to a stop his sneakers untied, his red shirt inside out, and his hair a crazy mess on top of his head. Overslept again? Tyler asked. How'd you know? Halen seemed genuinely perplexed as he knelt to tie his laces. Tyler, Sam, and Devin smiled, rolling their eyes. And go! shouted Mrs. Goldstein. Mr. Martucci produced a small cream-colored envelope and ripped it open. They all leaned in to read their first clue. Welcome, explorers. It's time to begin. You'll have to be both quick and clever to win. Think of the one place that has the most letters. Then go there to go on, Greenhaven go-getters. Mr. Martucci handed the map and clue to Devon and stepped back. Okay, red team, he said. Go to it. I'm just here to keep you company. It's your job to decipher the clues and determine where to go next. Louisa held back, uncertain, but the others jumped right in. Maybe the movie theater, suggested Devin. That's twelve letters. Greenhaven Public Library has twenty-three, said Sam, pointing at the map. Wait, you guys, said Tyler. It's a clue, right? We should have to, you know... Figure something out, not just count letters. That was a good point, Louisa realized, relieved that she hadn't blurted out something ridiculous before Tyler pointed out they were on the wrong track. Oh, letters, Halen exclaimed, grinning. Not alphabet letters, the kind you mail. It's the post office. They took off for the post office at a run. Louisa necessarily let the others take the lead, since she was still unfamiliar with much of the area. Taped to the stately front door was another envelope, which Halen tore open to reveal the next clue. Your next stop is one you'll be happy to make. You'll wish you had time to stop for a break. A sweet place to go for that birthday surprise. Hurry on over, and good things will rise. 
Stop and check. Reread. Why does Louisa hold back instead of speaking up? Rereading may help you. Come on, Louisa told herself firmly. You have to attempt to contribute. Maybe, maybe it means someplace with an elevator? Things will rise? No, wait. I've got it, Sam said. The bakery. That's where you'd get a birthday cake for a surprise party. And cakes are good things that rise. Louisa glanced around, embarrassed, but no one seemed to care that her idea had been wrong. And now that she thought about it, Sam and Devon's ideas for the first clue had been wrong, too, and no one had teased them or anything. The butterflies in her stomach seemed to be fluttering a little less as she headed toward the bakery with the others. Through the bakery's front window, they spotted the next envelope attached to the cake display case. Sam darted inside to retrieve it, maneuvering deftly around amused bakery patrons, then read the clue aloud. Think of our founder the great you-know-who. He started this town back in 1802. Make your way now to his last resting place. But time's growing short. Pick up the pace. Hey, I actually know this one, Louisa thought, astonished. To the cemetery, Devon cried. No, wait, Louisa said, stopping them. That's not right. It said his last resting place. That sounds like a cemetery to me, said Devon. Louisa nodded. I know, but he wasn't buried in the cemetery. I, I did some reading when my family decided to relocate here. The founder was actually buried near the library. There's a tree with a little plaque with his name engraved on it and everything, right out front. The other kids looked at each other. I've walked by that library almost every day of my life, Sam said. I never knew that. Good save, Devon said to Louisa. We'd have lost valuable time if we had to retrace our steps from the cemetery. We still need to hurry, Tyler reminded them, pointing at a group of yellow-shirted students running purposefully across an intersection. Stop and check. Reread. What error was the team about to make? How does Louisa help? Use the strategy reread. I know a shortcut, Halen cried. Follow me. No one moved. No, seriously, Halen said. You know how I'm always late? Trust me, I figured out a lot of shortcuts in this town. The others had to agree that made sense, and so they let Halen lead them up a tiny side street and across a scraggly patch of grass. A few more blocks, a sharp right turn, and suddenly they were standing in front of the library. Louisa found the clue taped to the plaque honoring the town's founder. Now go to the place where the pig skin is found, but don't waste too much time running around. Center yourselves, then rise to the top. When you run out of space, you'll know it's time to stop. Football Stadium Tyler said decisively. Pigskin, running around, that seems pretty obvious. I don't know what the center stuff means, though. Maybe the center of the field? Or the center section of the seating area? Devin proposed. I bet that's it, said Louisa, nodding. We should find the center section, then go up to the top. By the time they ran to the high school, home of the town's only football stadium, and up the many, many, many steps to the top, they were all out of breath. Tyler plucked the envelope from the aisle seat in the uppermost row. You're getting so close, the end is in sight. Accomplish your goal, don't give up the fight. Look where you've been, see where you are. Now navigate wisely, and you'll be a star. Devin stared blankly at the map. That doesn't narrow down the options at all. Maybe this one's the movie theater. You know, Sam said, like movie stars? Maybe, murmured Louisa. Close, like a close-up, and sight, because movies are something you watch. It could be a planetarium, said Tyler. Does our town have a planetarium? 
Guys! Devon exclaimed suddenly. Oh, wow! Look at this! She grabbed a pencil from her bag and placed the point at the park, where they had started. As they watched, she traced a line from there to the post office, then to the bakery, then the library, then the stadium. Do you see what I see? Louisa followed the lines with her eyes and got it at once. Their path was forming the shape of a star. They just needed one more line to complete it. A line connecting them right back to the beginning. The others saw it too, and together they turned and raced toward the park. When they reached the final stretch, Mr. Martucci veered off to the side, waving them on and shouting, Go, Red Team, go! Louisa could see the finish line beckoning up ahead. They were going to win. Suddenly the green team burst into sight from their left, followed by a blaze of yellow streaking by on the right. Louisa ducked her head and lengthened her stride, giving it everything she had. She could tell the others were doing the same. They ran faster and faster, arms pumping, feet flying, blurs of yellow and green, and now blue and purple, too, crowding in from all sides. The finish line was growing closer, and Mrs. Goldstein was shouting into her megaphone, and there were other people all around, cheering and yelling words of encouragement. Post office, library, stadium, park, bakery. Finally, the red team tumbled across the finish line, just one fateful step behind the greens. As Mrs. Goldstein pronounced the green team the winners, Tyler, Sam, Devon, Halen, and Louisa collapsed in a big, red, exhausted heap on the grass. So close, Tyler gasped. Yeah, Sam said, sounding even more out of breath. If only you ran a little faster. We might have won. Tyler made a face, and they all burst into laughter. Nice job, new girl, Devin said approvingly, giving Louisa a high five. We wouldn't even have come in second without your help. That was really fun, said Halen. I hope we get to be on the same team for something else. Me too, Louisa agreed, smiling. Her stomach butterflies had vanished without a trace. She lay under the trees with her new friends, still trying to catch her breath, confident that today had been only the first of many adventures yet to come. All right, that takes us to the end of our story for this week. Now remember, this story is going to be what your selection test is about. So go back and reread it, follow through it carefully. You can see how your vocabulary words are used. And it's also being used in your small book as well for your unit one week two story. If you have any questions, let me know. Otherwise, have a wonderful day. Take care. Bye-bye.